so you cannot neglect them. I will not say that I will not look at them. I will not say I will not punish the loose hanging ears. I, I will uh, the, the, the eyes are too light and so on and so on. They will be punished because they're very specific, but they're not the most important things for me. Okay? You have the neckline. The neck is only moderately long. The fair length says the, the pre standards. Only moderately. The short with the short is no good. Makes it difficult to find the balance. Wrong is no good. Puts too much weight, too, too much weight on it, and the dog will uh, again uh, find a difficulty in finding his balance and movement. So it should be a strong neck of a moderately long, but only moderately again. Dice que bueno que eh, las cabezas para el cibierno es lo más importante. Si él ve eh, orejas voladas o ojos claros, probablemente no lo califique o, o como corresponde. Ahora pasamos al cuello. Dice que el cuello debe ser fuerte porque es el que justamente le proporciona el balance al movimiento. Debe ser fuerte, no debe ser corto, no debe ser largo, debe ser proporcional al cuerpo. Top line, extremely important, can never be emphasized to know how important the top line is. The top line consists of three parts. You have the, the back, you have the loin, and you have what we call the croup. Yes? The back, that is the rib cage. The loin is the place of the top line, let's say the, the space in the top line between ribcage and the pelvis, and the croup, that is the, uh, the exterior of the pelvis. Ahora pasamos a la línea superior. La línea superior se divide en tres partes. La espalda, que va, eh, que sería todo, eh, toda la parte de las, co de las, co de las costillas. Eh, el lomo, que va desde donde terminan las costillas hasta donde empieza la, la, la pelvis. Y la pelvis, que vendría a ser la grupa. Rich Standard says that the dog can be 15% longer than his heart. <coughs> that is already a lot, 15%. One of the problems that we have nowadays all over the world is that the dogs are getting longer and longer and longer and nobody is saying something about it. When the dog is one centimeter too high, not breed suitable, cannot be used for breeding. It's three, four, five centimeters too long, that's not a problem. The dog is out of the standard, so it's not correct. They say that el estándar dice que el perro debe ser eh, de largo un 15% más que de alto. Dice que cuando se toman lo, los ZTP, por un centímetro más se descalifica un perro. Pero hay perros que se pasan de más de 15, del 15% y eso no se descalifica. Y eso es tan importante como los centímetros de la altura de la cruz. Why is it important? Because the length of the body, usually it's not the length of the ribcage, it's not the length of the group, some dogs, yes, but most of the time it's the loin. Uh, La mala medición es un error de los jueces que no lo penalizan. You cannot disqualify him. Right? Even a dog that is too high or too small, you cannot disqualify him. Because the, the bridge standard says for which fault you can disqualify, and being too high or too small is not a disqualification. You can only say it's insufficient, but you cannot disqualify him. Right? But at the show, we will, we will punish this. I will say the dog is too long, for instance. But it is during the ZTP or the bridge suitability test that we have, the bridge suitability test that we measure the dogs. That's the moment that we should say something about it. It's always the fault of the judges. That's what I said. Everything, everything that goes wrong in a breed, it's always the judge because the judge is rewarding things that he should not reward. And of course, we judges are human. What I'm going to say now, I should never say this to my wife, I'm not perfect either. So, but we all make faults. <coughs> we should think about this. And the reason why we should think about this is because the problem in the length of the body is usually the loin. Yeah? And as I explained on the table, you have the ribcage. So this part of the top line, the ribcage is the vertebrae, it is supported by the ribcage. You never have a problem there. You have the croup. This is the, the croup. Uh, this is supported by the pelvis, and the pelvis itself is supported by the rear angle, the rear angulation, the rear legs. You never have a problem there. The problem is between. You have the loin. There is nothing under the loin. The loin is just the, the stomach, but there is no structure under the loin. So the loin is only being held to the horizontal and only strong 
because of the muscles that are next to the vertebrae. But the longer the loin is, the longer the muscles are. Yes? And the longer the muscle is, the weaker it is. So if you have a problem with the loin, it's always in the top line, which is too long. It's most of the time it is in the loin. And it's not just because I don't like it, or it's not just because we don't like it. It is, this is moving. And this movement means tension of the vertebrae. And as I said at the table, this, at, in Austria, for instance, they're not punishing it yet. But in Austria, they don't not only take the radios on the hips, but also of the last vertebrae between the ribcage and the loin. Because they see more and more and more arthrosis there, because this is moving too much. So this length of the loin is important for the health of the dog. It is also important for his movement, so it's also important for the ability to work. Why? In front members, the dog is steering, he's giving direction, he's giving lift. We will come back to this later. If you need lift, otherwise the dog would show over the, over the, over the floor, so you need lift. But the propulsion, the motor of the movement comes from the rear. But from the rear, it must come to the front. And how, how does it come to the front? It comes through the top line. Yeah? And if I have something that is really stiff like this, uh, and you push, it goes to the front. If it's weak, and you push, and it's weak, it goes down, and then to the front. You don't want this. You don't want a dog that does this. It, it, it's not good. The dog is putting too much tension under the shoulder. He's going. He's pushing himself down, and only then, the moment his foot comes off the floor, he's allowing himself to go forward. <coughs> it's not a good movement, and you'll not keep, be able to keep this up for a very long life. Uh, so it's good to have a straight top line which will push him forward. So the, split, the short loin, it's, it's like this in the breed standard, short, strong and deep loin is very important. And it's not a detail, it's something that we should look for. Bueno, justamente está hablando de la línea superior. Eh, dice que la línea superior lineal, que como dijo recién, se divide en tres partes. La, parte, la primera parte que es la espalda, el lomo, y la grupa. Dice que la espalda eh, está sostenida por la caja torácica, la grupa está sostenida por la pelvis y por las angulaciones. Cuando hay un problema en eh, el lomo, ¿sí? no, tiene, no tiene sostén, está solo lo, las vísceras, lo, los órganos. Entonces esto lo que produce es un movimiento ondulante. Dice que en Austria están empezando a plaquear los perros, especialmente en... en en, la, en las últimas vértebras en la grupa porque están notando que este tipo de problemas lo van a empezar a, a penalizar este tipo de problemas se está trayendo artrosis en las últimas vértebras este, obviamente dice que eh, eh, la fuerza del movimiento se apoya en la grupa justamente por eso que se levanta o queda ahí o, hoy explicaba que eh, los perros bien angulados levantan la grupa ¿sí? pero en el movimiento hacen esto, entonces la grupa permanece lineal. Eh, los perros que están ¿cómo? bien angulados, bien angulados, y los eh, sobreangulados eran, sí, los sobreangulados levantaban levemente la grupa y dejaban ahí, ¿por qué? Porque tenían la angulación de la pelvis muy muy alta, entonces al mover lo que hacían era levantaban la grupa. La línea superior debe ser Okay. Chest. The breed standard, the breed standard says that the chest should be about 50 half, 50% of the head. How many dogs do you know who have this? Dice que el pecho en el estándar dice que debe ser el 50 50% How many how many dogs do you have in your country who have this? ¿Cuántos perros conocen ustedes que que sea. 50% de, de, de la altura. De la altura. De la cruz. Que tiene que, que tener la, del piso a, a acá y acá a la cruz. 50, 50. 50, 50. We measure the ZTP or the bridge suitability. We, we measure we measure the dog. It's, it's 60, 65 and then we measure the chest. Should be 30, 32 and a half. How many dogs have you ever measured? Dice cuántos perros midieron que cumplan con estas características. We used to have those. We used to have that. That used to be. Good, huh? No, you, you want, I have one at home. You know why? Because he has short legs. That's why he has 50%. Only because he has short legs. Dice que 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 tú realizó un ZTP y por el único motivo que era el 50% de de la altura de la cruz era porque tenía patas cortas. 
But 15, 20 years ago, and long ago, no, la profundidad del pecho. Sí, sí, sí. But 15, 20 years ago, we had those dogs with those chests. No, es la luz. En la luz al 50% de, 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 de acá a acá, eso lo quise yo. De acá acá tiene que igualarse acá acá. Y eso no se mide en los ZTP. Se hace otra cosa. We don't have it anymore. And why not? Because we're not paying attention to it. And why does a dog need a chest that is so deep and so wide that this, because if he has to run for a long time, his lungs you have to be able to expand, he has to be able to work open. Yeah? His liver in the different layers have to be able to, 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 to move. His heart needs the space to, to, to work. Yeah? And if he have, doesn't have the chest that is deep enough, if he doesn't have the chest that is wide and round enough, It's impossible. It's impossible to, to, to do this. So in this is not just a detail, it is something that is characteristic for the breed, is characteristic for a dog that has to do this job he was meant to do. And we're not paying attention, so we're losing it. The same thing is well-sprung ribs, round ribs. It should not be like a ton, huh? but it should be round. Nowadays, many often, often we say elbows should lie tighter to the body. There's no body. The elbows are okay, but there's no body to lie against because the chest is not like this, the chest is like this. And nobody's paying attention and we're losing it. That's what nature wants. The wolf has a chest like this, huh? We want a chest like, no, that's just exaggerate. We want a chest like this, the wolf is only like this. If we don't put emphasis on this in breeding, the Rottweiler will have a chest like this. We will have to pay attention for this. Bueno, dice que justamente necesitamos la profundidad y la amplitud del pecho para que el perro en, en, en su trote pueda respirar y hacer su corazón. ¿Cuál sería esa amplitud de pecho que tendría que tener? La, ¿Habría una relación entre la amplitud de pecho y la profundidad de pecho? <coughs> Yeah, there's not, you cannot say this in figures, you cannot say this in numbers because it's not in the breed standard. So I cannot define this. But it has to be in a good relationship, in a good harmonious relationship, good proportion. Yeah? Because it's no use to have a chest this wide and the chest is only this deep. It's no use to have a chest this deep and it's only this wide. It has to be in proportion. Dice que no hay forma porque no está en el estándar. Es más o menos una cuestión de hacer algo proporcional. Vuelve a lo mismo, la naturaleza trata de que los perros vuelvan a ser lobos, por eso lo que dice, los lobos tienen un pecho así, nosotros tenemos que criar perros con un pecho así, tenemos que mantener esto porque no es un detalle menor. But it's an interesting question, I will tell you why, because what we measure in Europe, that is the height of the dog, the length of the dog, the chest depth, and that is all that we, and the chest uh, circumstances, so the, uh, the, how, how is the total of it, that's all that we measure. What we're looking for is not for the longest and the, the, and the, the, and the, the highest. What we're looking for is for the correlation, for the, the conformation as in the breed standard. This high plus maximum 15% and the chest depth 50% of, of the height of the dog. So we're looking for, let's say, uh, what the, for the numbers that are in the breed standard, nothing more. But it's interesting because in Finland, and it's the only country where I've ever seen this, in Finland they measure a lot more. They don't measure only the head, uh, the, the muzzle, and the, 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 the proportion with the skull. They also measure how wide the muzzle is. They also measure how wide the, the chest is. They also measure how wide the, the loin is. They, they also measure how long, how, how broad the, 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 the upper thigh is. They measure a lot more, but they don't do anything with it. They just collect the data. But it might be interesting maybe to have this in, uh, to, in, in, in graphics to see how this is evolving in the time. Dice que en Europa lo único que suelen medir es el largo, el, la altura de la cruz, el largo del perro, la profundidad y la amplitud del pecho. Para más o menos eh, realizar un, para un, un, un análisis de si el perro es armonioso. Eh, nombró que en fin... No, 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 Buscando la proporción que define el estándar de la raza. Y nombró que en Finlandia, bueno, hacen muchísimas más mediciones, no solo miden la relación hocico-cráneo, también eh, miden el ancho del hocico, eh, el largo de los huesos, pero solo lo hacen por medir. Eh, dice que es una serie de datos que quedan almacenados, pero no, no hacen nada. 
even the bones and the, the circle of the bones, they measure everything. Los huesos. But they just collect the data, they're not doing anything with it. But it would be interesting uh, to have this in graphics and to see how this is evolving in the time. Uh, Dice que, que, bueno, que no hacen nada, pero que sería interesante eh, trasladarlo esto a gráficos para ver si fue evolucionando, cómo fue evolucionando en el tiempo. Me había leído en una publicación en ese tiempo norteamericana que la amplitud del pecho tiene que ser proporcional al largo del húmero. El largo del húmero. It is, it is something we are looking for. I, I, I spoke on the table about this professor, uh, Jerusalemsky. He's a Russian professor. Uh, you can read his article. It's in the FCI newsletter, I think, of... When was the... Sorry? Dice que justamente él nombró un, un profesor ruso que escribió un artículo que se encuentra es en una carta de la FCI. Creo que en 2010 o 2011. Es también en español. So y él está usando las figuras de los números de Fabonicelli, no sé. Fibonicelli, no sé. Alguien aquí ha leído el libro of David Brown, Dan Brown, um, about the last Leonardo da Vinci's, you know, the da famous da novel. Uh, da Vinci. Yeah. The Da Vinci Code, yes. Uh, he, he, at a certain moment, they are talking about a code in the Fibonicelli <laughs> figures, yes? So you have Fibonicelli or whatever, thinker, Italian thinker of the Renaissance, and he's using this number of, uh, series is two numbers, equals plus we have one one two one two three two three five three five eight so that's good and that's and he says if you, a lot of architects are using this have been using this proportion for many centuries already and they are still using it uh, because it doesn't lead to beauty the definition of beauty but you can quantify harmony it's what i said at the table earlier on what i find beautiful is not what you like what you think is beautiful maybe he says it's ugly That's personal. You cannot quantify this. You cannot give a definition of what is beautiful. But what is harmonious, that you can quantify. Because what I find harmonious, you find harmonious. He finds harmonious. That is why you have so many styles and so many things all over the world that we all enjoy. Because, not because of the beauty, but because of the harmony. And this professor Jaru Zalemski, he was looking for the definition on the dog's body in numbers. And he defines what you call, so the harmony and the proportion in the Fibonacelli numbers. It's like in the top line, what I said on the table, <coughs> two, one, one. Two for the back, one for the loin, one for the, for the crew. And he will find the same correlation, the same proportion on the head, in the chest, upper arm, and so on and so on. So maybe there you could find an answer, uh, yes, you couldn't define the, the width of the chest by looking at the, uh, the length of the upper arm. It's the same thing what Carla Lenzi is doing in Italy. She's looking for uh, the, the correlation, the proportions in the head in proportion to all the parts of the body. And it's always the same numbers that are coming back. The 112, the 358, it's always the same proportion to come back. So it could be true that what you say, yes. But I think as a judge, we're not measuring. T tomorrow I will not measure your dog in the ring unless I think it's too high or too small. It's a question of appreciation and looking for, do I think that the harmony is there? Yes or no? And it's not always easy. Bueno, eh, oh, oh, dice que eh, con respecto a esto, bueno, no hay forma de medirlo, pero dice que él recomienda a este, a este profesor ruso, tiene una, una carta escrita en la, en la página de la FCI del 2010-2011 aproximadamente, que eh, utiliza una, una, una medida, una escala. Eh, que, que aparece en el, en el libro del Código Da Vinci, que es, no sé cómo es, dice que todavía lo usan algunos arquitectos, que esto lo que hace es eh, como detectar armonía, ¿sí? y que este profesor lo que dice es que la, la armonía del perro en la escala es 2-1-1, en la línea superior sería 
este, dos desde el cuello hasta donde terminan las costillas, uno lo que sería el lomo, uno eh, la grupa. Esta es la escala que dice este hombre. Dice así que, que sí, que se podría hacer esto de, de medir la relación de, de la amplitud del pecho con el húmero. Yeah, but he's not looking for the two on one on the chest, he's looking for the same number of abenicelli, and maybe it's not a two on one, but maybe it's the, the, the three, five, eight, but he's looking for this proportion all over the body, the length of the upper thigh and the under thigh and the hock, uh, and so on and so on. And what he says is, the harmony in a dog's body and can be defined by this Fibonacelli series. Dice que la armonía de un perro se puede, justamente lo que explica es que él, él hace esta relación sobre la línea superior, ¿no? Lo, eh, que, y que la armonía del perro se puede llegar a, a, a buscar utilizando esta escala. Inclusive está hablando, de, de, contó que Carla Lenzi está haciendo un... Um, está, está, está buscando un estudio, buscando las proporciones de la cabeza con otras partes del cuerpo. Sí, incluso creo que hablamos de un 28% largo de la cabeza. El año, no, no, el año pasado, eh, Spindler decía que el hocico tiene que tener eh, que ver con, con el dorso. Que tenía que haber una proporción entre el hocico y, y, y el dorso del perro. Por eso eh, criticó los hocicos cortos. Decía que tiene que tener una proporción el hocico con el dorso. ¿Dorso o lo? Todo el dorso, no, no, claro. la proporción tiene que ser, el hocico tiene que tener, una, eh, tiene que tener que ver con el dorso el año. And this is what this professor Yaruzilemski, Yaruzilemski did with the body of the Rottweiler and the breech stand of the Rottweiler. And this was in Moscow, so he had, I have some photos with him, I have them for him projected. And he show, was showing us this proportion all over the body. And he said there's one fault, one mistake in the Rottweiler's breech standards. And he says that the breed standard says that the upper thigh should be medium long. And he says if you want harmony and a better harmony, then you need a long upper thigh. Mm -hmm. And then it's much more harmonious. And I said, that was my reflection then. I said, yes, it will be more harmonious, but he will change the dog's angulation. He will change his movement. And you will have to change his angulation in front too, because the longer his rear members are, and the further, and if he wants to open efficiently the length of his rear members, he will push, he will, his propulsion will be a certain amount of floor, but he has to be able to take this in the front too. So if you need a longer upper thigh in the rear, you will need a longer upper arm in the front, and you have another angulation, but also another movement. So if we want to preserve the movement, which is still breed specific, the two, the two clocks, the two bells, with the same amount of uh, place that they are taking, take just as much as you can propose in the rear, you cannot lengthen the upper tire of the rock. <coughs> and that's what I was saying. What we want is not the, har the harmony that nature dictates. What we want is something that we want artificially, because it is used, it is necessary for the use that we want of the dog. That's again our starting point. Dice que este profesor en el estudio que había hecho decía que el Rottweiler para, eh, tenía un solo defecto para llegar a ser armonioso. Uh, was the upper arm? Upper tie. Upper upper tie. tie. Upper the length of the upper tie. Eh, lo, el húmero, húmero, ¿no? Que el húmero era de un tamaño medio y debería ser más largo. Y él le dijo sí, pero si sería más largo. El fémur, el fémur. El húmero está en el anterior. No, no, no. no. El fémur. Húmero, fémur. Posterior. No se los huesos, perdón. <risa> eh, él le dijo que, que si sería más largo el fémur, dejaría de ser armonioso. No, para que sea más armonioso. Y él le dijo, dejaría de, 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 de ser un rottweiler, dejaría de, de tener la estructura de un rottweiler si sería más largo. Entonces, bueno, y eso es a lo que llegaba. Y ahí es lo que explicaba hoy que decía de, de, del movimiento. Con un fémur más largo, eh, el alcance sería otro. Y, y sí, la angulación anterior también. no podría llegar a... Sí. No, no sería armonioso. Eh, volviendo, volviendo al tema anterior, cuando hablaba del largo y alto, el del 15%, que es el tolerable. ¿Cuál sería su criterio? El largo ideal, el porcentaje para el largo ideal, y cuál sería, a su criterio, un perro corto, hablando de esos porcentajes. 15%. A su criterio, eh, un perro ideal, 
el largo, cuál sería el ideal, ah, en porcentajes de altura de largo, altura, y cuál ¿verdad? sería corto en esa relación. There are not many breeds of which we say this high is this long. The one special exception that I know, but I only judge Rottweiler, so I don't know all the other breeds, uh, is the Flemish cow dog. He should be square, really square. And he's also a cow driving dog, just like the Rottweiler. And he has the same, more or less the same movement as the Rottweiler. So very short reach, very short, not, not very short, but short reach, medium reach, medium uh, propulsion. Uh, but because he is square, He's pushing, what he's pushing is very efficiently, because what he's pushing is almost the whole length of his body. While the Rottweiler, if you allow more than, let's say, 15%, he's not pushing just as much in, co in conformation and correlation to his le length of the body. So let's say the 15% is already a march, which is a lot, but we should stay somewhere, I think if it's 10%, it's more than enough. But I can't, I never made the calculation, I can't tell you this is for me perfect, I don't know. I don't know, but I think 15% we can allow, it goes over the 15%, you go to problems. Why do you go to problems? Because most of the time, <coughs> I repeat myself, it's in the loin, you can have a health problem, and you will have a problem in bringing over the propulsion to the front, that's one problem, and the second problem is against the efficiency, because the longer the top line is, the, the members, the, so the, the legs, are not longer because of this, they're just the same length. So they will go to the front, they will not go as far in proportion to the shorter dog as far, and while the, the shorter dog will put his foot on the floor and will propulse almost three quarters of the length of his body, the longer dog will only propulse somewhat more than half of his body. So the, the longer dog will have to use a lot more energy, a lot more movement to take the same distance as the shorter dog in conformation to his body. Of course, not this, the, the meters will be maybe the same, but in, in conformation to his body, in correlation to his body, it will be different. And that's, that's what I think what the problem is. But if you ask me, is it 10%, 11% or 12%, I can't tell you. I'm also just like you, an amateur, and not more than an amateur, I'm not a scientist. Uh, and I don't make numbers and graphics. Uh, Dice que es un amateur, es un científico, pero que para él entre un 10 y un 15% eh, está bien. Cuando se pasa del 15% comienzan los problemas de los que hablaba hoy, que obviamente el empuje hace que, que, que todo lo que es la línea menos superior... menos de un 10 también. ¿Cómo? Menos de un 10 y más de un 15... Está con el de entre un 10 y un 15. Está todo él. siempre moderado. Yeah, but, but claro. no, 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 esa relación, 9-10-9, 9 sería un 11%. But it's not just the loin what I spoke about. I also spoke about, let's say, the, the dog's movement, uh, the dog, the shorter dog's movement, uh, let's say, in, in correlation, in correlation between the length of his stride and his body, will be more efficient if he's shorter than when he's square. When he's shorter than longer? When he's, when he's shorter, I mean, he brings his foot to the front, and, and he put, he's putting his foot, let's say, under the rib cage. And then from there on, he's pushing the whole length of his rear members to the last. So he's pushing this part of his body. Let's say this is the body. He's propulsing, he's bringing forward this part. If the dog is longer, he's push, putting his foot only under the stomach. So he will only put <coughs> half of his body to the front. He says that the efficiency of movement is better in perros with angulations posterior. Cortas, no, sí, cort, cortas que largas, porque por, por todo lo eh, volvemos siempre a lo mismo. Dice que, que, que con pequeños trazos puede cubrir el mismo terreno que uno con un perro que, que se estira, que, que, que se esfuerza más. But, pero, but if they are too short, if you, are too short you will have another problem. Si son muy cortos, tienen otros problemas. Natural movement, natural movement is not a terminology that the judge should use to say, I don't know what I'm seeing. Yeah? Natural movement means that the dog is putting his hind feet <coughs> in the same place immediately after the front feet has, foot has left the floor. So the front foot is, is here. The moment that this foot leaves to the front again, that is the moment that the hind foot comes on the same okay. space. That is natural movement. So you have a very short floating moment between the, the foot leaving and the foot touching. That is what we call natural movement. This is also means when this foot comes on the same place, that the, the front feet and the hind feet are on the same line. 
if you see a dog move from the rear, you see, like a wolf, <coughs> you see that the feet are, are walking like this, on one line. When the dog is too short and is bringing in to, into the front his, his rear feet, he will touch the front feet. Okay. Dice que cuando, bueno, el perro es muy corto, explica el, el movimiento del perro. El movimiento del perro es que cuando una pata se apoya, cuando viene la otra, esta se levanta. No, no hay momento en que las dos patas tienen que estar suspendidas en el aire. Eso es para lo que él, para lo que él considera un buen movimiento. Aunque los jueces no, 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 no pueden. They walk on a line, so they, they, they walk, the, 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 the feet move in the same line. Habló algo de los jueces, como que los jueces no pueden solo basarse en movimiento, pero dice que cuando uno ve el movimiento a, a lo largo tiene que ver una línea sola con las cuatro patas. ¿sí? Eh, dice que justamente el problema de los perros cortos es que se chocan las patas. That is one of the problems we we see when a dog has a tilt a croup, which is the pelvis which is too tilted. Because the, the, the joint in the pelvis cannot go further than this, it's like your elbow. Okay? So when the, 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 the pelvis is too tilted, that means that the upper thigh cannot go further than this, but it can go wide to the front, but not to the rear. But if it goes wide to the front, then he will touch his front feet, and then you will see the dog run like a crab. Porque dice que la, la, como la articulación de la pelvis puede, puede ir más para adelante que para atrás, entonces puede estirar más para atrás tocando la pata de adelante. Eh, y pasuquea. Y luego el perro va a empezar a moverse como un crab. Así que los cortos no son muy buenos. Los cortos no son muy buenos. Sí, pasuquea. 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 Pasuquea way too short in the upper arm and were really steep in the upper arm. They had a good shoulder, a good angulation in the shoulder, but the upper arm was too short. We had this problem for many years and now it's getting better. Why do we need an upper arm? We need an upper arm for two reasons. First of all, to give length, because when the angulation opens, I mean, you get the sum. You have the, the shoulder blade, you have the upper arm, you have the underarm, you have the metacarps, and then you have the foot. So you have one straight line. If the upper arm is too short, the, 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 the line is only like this. The upper arm is normal when it opens, it touches the floor. It's a difference. Okay? First indication, you stand in front of the dog and you see that the chest is not filling the opening between the, the, the four arms. First indication, short upper arm. Then you have to look. Why do we need an upper arm? To give more length, also to absorb the shocks and to give lifts. And when we move, we go up. When you move, you go up and then you fall down. That is movement. The dog has the same thing. Just imagine that the dog in front would not have lift, would not go up, and you would have to push him over the floor like this. That would not work. He has to go up, and then comes the propulsion. That is the way the dog is moving. So this upper arm, the moment he's stretched out, the dog will cramp the muscles in his metacarp. He will go up, and because the upper arm is stretched out, the dog goes higher up than when the upper arm would be shorter, or when the upper arm would not open triangulation. Dice que eh, lo que está viendo es ahora el problema en la longitud de, de lo que sería el húmero. Ahora sí es el húmero, ¿no? <risa> en la longitud del húmero. Ve buenos hombros, ¿sí? Pero a, lo, al húmero, a, al húmero ser corto, cuando, esa, cuando, cuando Saca el cordo. hace este movimiento, no llega, no llega a tocar el, el piso. ¿Ese era Superman? con el No llega a tocar el, el, el piso. En cambio, con el húmero más largo, Llegaría, ¿no? por, por la continuación del brazo. Yeah, the, dog, the moment the, the, the angulation and front are open, this is the moment that the dog should touch the floor. Not there, should touch the floor. That's Tiene que el húmero es lo que le da el alcance al movimiento. Uh, sí, bueno. sí. Un número fue... corto daría una angulación eso, abierta. Eso, eso se genera porque el perro es corto o porque el handler le da mucha rapidez. El número es corto. El número es corto. El número es corto. Pero también no se genera porque lo lleva muy rápido. Es el problema del perro si tiene el número corto. El problema del perro si tiene el número corto. 
I mean, you, you have the shoulder blade, you have the upper arm, and then you have the underarm. That is the way it should be. You have a short upper arm. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you, have, if you have a short upper arm, you have the shoulder blade, and then you have the upper arm, and then you have the upper arm. It should be like this. That's the upper arm. Another thing that we have many problems with, I find we have many problems with, uh, and that is, well, that, that is the weak pastor, the weak metacarps. Okay. The problem with the Rottweil at the moment is not as bad as with the German Shepherd. With the German Shepherd, you have the problem of the carpal subluxation. <coughs> Luckily, we do not have that problem yet, but we have to look out that it will, we will not have it. The difference between the, the carpal subluxation and the weak car and the weak uh, metacarps is you have the 14 little bones in the metacarp. Uh, they are connected with cartilage, white bone, soft white bone. If the connection between the bone and the cartilage is not there, then you have carpal subluxation. And you have these dogs walk, they just run, it's look like they have loose socks on their feet. And they will, the dog is running on his toes, carpal subluxation means he goes flat like this. And he's not even trying to give lift, he's just running like this. When you have a weak pastern, then there is a connection between the cartilage and the little bones, the connection is there. But the muscles around are were not strong enough to give the dog the let's say the possibility of recovering from the shock. Why do we have the metacarp? The metacarp with the cartilage is necessary for two reasons. First of all, to absorb the shock. Don't forget the dog is running with his full weight, he comes on his toes, and he needs something to absorb this. And that is why the metacarp should be flexible. They should not be steep, they, shouldn't be, they should have an angulation, they should be flexible, but they should still be strong. Because the moment that he's bending through, he needs lift, remember, he has to go up again. And if it's too weak, he's going down. And then he's not running on his toe, he's running on his, what we call the pulse. That means that he's shortening <coughs> the stride. While he has normally a, a reach like this, now suddenly he's not reaching there, he's only reaching here. And he's trying to lift there, not high enough. He's not going up. So what do we see? We see a dog in the rear who's trying to open his angulation. He's pushing, he wants to open his angulation between the, 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 the hip bone and the upper thigh, the under thigh and the upper thigh. He's pushing, but he can't go forward because in front he's holding back. He should reach here, but he's only reaching there. And then you see the dog running downhill. The tilted up croup running downhill, broken behind the shoulder. And that's a problem we see more and more. Un gran problema que él ve eh, es eh, el quiebre de, de, de la muñeca de los perros en el momento del movimiento. Dice que eh, eh, la, pero los huesos son 14. Por cartílago. Por cartílago. Porque esto es muy importante. Y, y produce la subluxación de. Exacto, que es del metacarpiano, ¿puede ser? Claro, claro. Que, que al abrir los carpos en movimiento se puede producir la subluxación de los metacarpos con, car con el carpo. <coughs> es necesario que el cartílago y los huesos estén juntos por, para absorber el golpe en el momento en que cae. ¿sí? Lo, que, lo que ve que hay perros que, lo que vos le preguntabas hoy, los perros que van con la grupa hacia arriba, viste, en bajada, ¿sí? es justamente por este problema. Porque dice que tienen el empuje por la angulación posterior, pero al no tener la fuerza necesaria en, la angulación, en, en, en lo que serían las muñecas, entonces no, 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 puede, no puede acompañar. So he pushes up. Well, if he can't push it to the front, he pushes, to the, he pushes up. So he's building up. Al no poder empujar para arriba, entonces con la angulación. Another remark that we see more and more, and just look and you will. I hope you will not hear it tomorrow, but I think you will hear it tomorrow. Long toes in front. We see the breed standard says that the, the, the front feet should be well arched, the short toes, very strong toes. Why? Again, lift. Just the dog running on his feet, he have a short toe, it's easy. Short is strong. Short means he goes up easily. Long, hmm, it's difficult to go up. Very difficult. And the longer the toe, the more difficult it becomes to go up. Eso es dedo de liebre.
It works like an mm -hmm. average. Bueno, está diciendo que está viendo los dedos de las patas muy The breed standard says the toes in the rear are longer than in the front. And now it is. En las patas está viendo los dedos muy largos. Los dedos cortos significa que son fuertes, que se apoyan fuerte. En cambio está viendo dedos muy largos que And nowadays you look and you see that the front toes are just as long as the rear toes, meaning that the front toes are full. <coughs> That's what the breed standard says. And, and again, everything we have speak, spoken about now, uh, every time I said what is the importance, it's always about the use. It's never about, I like it, it's more beautiful, it's always the use. <laughs> fue armado así para el uso del perro, no porque a, porque a una persona le guste. Okay. Same thing we go to the angulation in the rear. We don't have exaggerated angulations, we have moderate angulations. We don't have 90 degrees in the knee, we have more than 90 degrees in the knee. In the, the longer the upper thigh is and the longer the under thigh is, the more angulation you will have and the more sharper it will become. Is the more angulation you have, the less breed specific uh, movement you will have, the more difficulty you will have in opening an angulation, the less efficiency you will have, and the less breed specificness you will have. So again, the, the uh, length of the upper thigh, the length of the under thigh, and the length of the hog was defined breed specifically for the use that the dog was meant to use. Bueno, está hablando justamente de, de, de las angulaciones posteriores. Dice que <coughs> la angulación de la rodilla debe ser de 90 grados o más, siempre obtusa. Este, más de lo que viene diciendo, que fue creado para, para, para tener un movimiento armonioso. The way to show a dog's angulation correctly is to have his hock, right? so the sole of the foot, as we say, the hock, straight on the floor, 90 degrees. Dice que el, la manera correcta de mostrar un perro es sosteniendo el garrón a 90 grados. That's the only, that's the only moment that you will see what is the correct angulation, correct length. Es en el único momento que vas a ver un perro, la, la angulación correcta de un perro. So, tomorrow again you show your dog the way you want to show him, but I will judge him the way you show the dog to me. And I remember last year I was in Macedonia, and my best dog, I told the owner, if you show him like this, it will be a high good, maybe a small, very good, but not more than this. This dog was totally stretched out. You could see no angulation at all, not in front, not in rear. It was totally untypical. And then uh, only after he listened, and after some time, he relaxed the dog, and I had my best dog in the ring. Not the best dog in the ring, that was a youth male, but I had my best male. Dice que tuvo que, eh, el año pasado en Macedonia, tuvo que decirle a un handler que deje de mostrar al perro como lo mostraba, porque no lo podía ver, el perro se estiraba todo, entonces él no podía ver las angulaciones. Cuando el perro se relajó, le dio mejor de raza al perro, porque era excelente. Como lo mostraba el handler, no, no, él no lo podía apreciar al perro. Then another thing that people say it's a detail is the coach. It's not a detail. Pero. If it's a working dog, meaning that he has to work outside, he needs a correct coat. The Rottweiler's coat is stock hair, meaning he has undercoat and he has an upper layer. I remember my first Rottweiler, like this one, if you had to open the coat, you had to take your finger and say crack. It was hard, closed, and you had to crack it. But if this dog stood in the rain, he was dry. The water just dripped off. If this dog stood in the snow, the snow was on him, he was, he was white. Because the insulation of this coat was so good, the snow didn't melt. The, the warmth was kept inside of his coat. In the summer, the dog shone, the sun reflected away from his coat. And he could still move, he could still run, and he could still function, even if he was 30 degrees. Yeah? That was not a problem for this dog, but he had a correct coat. Now the coats are short. Yeah, medium long stock hair, that's German Shepherd hair, that's this long. Eh? How many dogs you see with this long hair? If you have one, they will say, hey, it's too long. No, this is correct. Now it's very short, it's soft, and it's open. It's raining and the dogs are standing there shivering, cold and wet. It's not a correct coat. Again, the same thing, I keep repeating myself, if we don't put emphasis on it, if we say it's a detail, it's not important, we will lose the correct coat. And it's not a detail. If he has to work, then he needs this good coat. 
Uh, I'll give you, for instance, in Sweden, where the Rottweiler is being used, really put to use still also by the military and the army. Sweden has enormous, an, an, an immense, uh, doesn't have many people living there, but they have a lot, enormous woods. Mm -hmm. And you have some crazy people. You have them here, you have them in Belgium, you have them everywhere. But in Sweden, you have many crazy people. And you know what they do? They, they take their clothes off and they walk away in the woods. And they are lost. And when people know that this happens, then they go find them, search for them with dogs. Uh, first, they bring in the Malinois and the German Shepherd, because they are really quickly, very fast. And when they don't find them, then they bring in the big boys, they bring in the Rottweiler, because those dogs will look for, search for a whole day. They have the endurance to look for a very long time. Yeah? And also, they have the coat for it. Just like the German Shepherd, they have still the coat for it. They have the long, dense, and insulating coats. <coughs> Most of the dogs that I see nowadays, if you put them in the snow, they won't survive. They will not do it for a very long time. I, I've had dogs with short coat, I have dogs with a long coat. All my dogs with a correct coat in the winter when it snows, and I put the heating on a kennel, they sleep outside in the snow. So I have to put, take away the heat, and then they sleep inside. The dog with a short coat in the winter, I don't see them. I have to go knock on the, knock on the door, hello, and then he'll come and look at me. Because it's cold. That's a difference, so it's not a detail. It's breed specific. The breed standard says medium long stock hair. If it's not medium long stock hair, it's fault. I'm not saying I will take away the excellent for it. If it's too short, yes. But it is something that you will find in your critique and it's something you should think about. Then another, yeah, okay. <laughs> eh, habla de, bueno, del largo del pelo, dice que no es algo menos importante, ya que justamente el largo del pelo fue diseñado para que estos perros puedan resistir la, 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 las bajas eh, temperaturas. Tiene que, él escuchó muchas veces decir que hay perros con pelo muy largo, y para él el problema no es el pelo muy largo, ya que, bueno, tienen la, las dos capas de, de pelo. Eh, sino el problema que hay en los perros de ahora es que tienen el pelo muy corto, muy suave y abierto. abierto. Oh, eh, eh, dice que bueno, contó que a su primer perro, él, se acuerda que en invierno iba y le ponía el dedo así y no le podía tocar el cuero de tan espeso que era el pelo y que en verano obviamente lo mudaba como siempre y que podía soportar temperaturas de 30 grados. Eh, contó también que en Suecia... Eh, utilizan rottweilers para, para eh, la, la policía y que no, hacen como un, no sé si es entrenamiento o, o tipo excursión, bueno, agarran un grupo de gente, les sacan la ropa y los largan al bosque. Entonces, largan a los malinois y luego a los ovejeros, ellos los sacaron porque no, no, lo podían, no los podían ubicar y eh, trajeron a los muchachos grandotes, dijo, tra llevaron a los rot ¿por qué? porque tienen la resistencia para poder buscar durante varias horas, porque tienen el pelaje para poder resistir las temperaturas este, y bueno, y, y, y con ellos trabajan ahora. Dos cosas que han sido muy importantes en juzgar y breeding son el color de la pigmentación y el Pigmentación de boca y ojos. We, I remember the days when you had a little pink or the eyes were, let's say, not in the number twos, you, you didn't get an excellent, it was backwards. That, those were the times that the quality of the Rottweilers were extremely high, let's say, middle of, medium of the 90s, end of the 90s. Nowadays, we don't have that luxury anymore and they are seen more as a detail. They are breed specific, so me too, I like a very dark pigmentation. But it's not the most important thing because I've never seen a dog working better because he is black instead of pink spotted. Of course, when the dog has his mouth open and it takes away the expression, then you will go backwards. But as long as it doesn't away, take doesn't take away the expression, I think it's a detail. The color of the eye for a very long time we wanted it to be black. Has anybody here ever seen a dog with black eyes? No, maybe you have. I have seen it. Has somebody seen a dog with black eyes? A1. You know A1? The A, A, A. I will, I will try it. Uh, I will translate it. Uh, dice que, bueno, eh, si bien eh, la pigmentación de la boca y de los ojos no es funcional a la utilidad del perro, es importante porque está marcado en el estándar. Dice que la época de oro de la pigmentación fue mediados de los 90 hasta los fines de los 90, donde por ahí un perro que, que, ten, que tenía ojos del dos, de, en los dos 
eh, podía llegar a tener una calificación muy bien, hoy eso dejó de tener importancia y se repitió que si bien no, no es importante para la utilidad del perro, está marcado en el estándar y pregunta si alguien alguna vez en su vida vio un perro con ojos 1A. 1A, sí. 1A. Porque dice, yo sí lo Yeah, you know when we do the ZEP or the breed suitability so we, we look at the color of the eye, we have the eye bulbs and we look at the, what number is it? And A1 is black, almost black. And people, we used to say, some people, it's typical for the Rottweiler people, huh? people we, we are crazy. It can never be enough, everything must be as much as possible. Huh? It's crazy and we want the dark eyes as dark as possible. Well, I have seen the A1s, I don't want a dog with an A1. They could just as well have no eyes, it's just like two holes. It, there's no life in it, there's no personality, <laughs> there's, there's no soul in it. Y que lo, lo, los creadores tienden siempre a exagerar. A él no le gustan los ojos 1A porque le quitan expresión. Son como dos bolas negras. Claro, sin iris, sin nada. Son dos bolas negras que les quitan la expresión al perro. So a brown eye is beautiful, it's lively, it gives personality to a dog. The black. Un ojo marrón oscuro le da personalidad, le da vida al perro. El 1B, 1B. 1B. It's still very dark, you know, 1B is very, very dark, it's still very dark. If it's 2A, 2B, I'm very happy. Uh, 3A, very happy. 3A, también. 4A, I'm very unhappy. Uh, <laughs> 4A, ya está. No, vamos a hacer un Dice que es muy típico de la gente que cría Rottweiler que nunca algo es suficiente. The Rottweiler in all his details, everything in the standard, with one exception, and that is the color of the gum, we should be as dark as possible, but all the rest is just moderately. But for us it's never enough, we want extremes, and it's so bad. Dice que todo lo que es la, la, los colores, la pigmentación de Rottweiler debe ser moderado, salvo la pigmentación de la boca que sí debe ser negra. Ah, eh, no, no, eh, no, 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 pero dijo que no, 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 Is the pigmentation of the, of the, of the dice que dog. lo único que dice en el, en el estándar de la raza es que ma, lo más oscuro posible es en la pigmentación de la All boca. The rest is just moderate. Todo lo demás es moderado. Yeah. The, and, but for the Rottweiler people, it can never be enough. It must always be more and more and more. I, I think it's a shame. Yeah. Claro. Dice que es una lástima que para nosotros siempre encargamos más, más, más porque todo tiene que ser todo moderado. Eh, el perro que le dan con el Tinder, eh, Kevin Van Bergen. No, no es muy bueno con nombres de dogs. Quieren hablar de dogs. Claro, ok, y ojos. Porque. Es que yo sé el nombre, creo que me lo A Kevin von Van Bergen. Ojo y boca. Eyes and mouth, dark, very dark. That dog. Sí. Yeah, ok. ¿Qué quieres que me diga sobre eso? Quiero decir. Yeah, ¿Qué es lo que quería pero sí tenía ojos oscuros. I don't think at the moment we have a problem with pigmentation. I don't think at the moment we have a problem with the color of the eyes. The problem that I see at the moment worldwide is we plaster too long in the loins, uh, exaggerated angulation in the, in the front and the rear that they can never open during movement. Uh, no condition, no strength, no character, no nature, no attitude. Heads too exaggerated. Uh, it's, 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 it's important. Justamente you know, dice que esos dos temas no son como los más importantes, que hay un montón de problemas más que, que, que están como exagerados, cabeza, las muñecas, el hombro, las angulaciones, hay un montón de cosas más que como que mejorar, que eso es solo un detalle. Claro, es importante. Ah, y la actitud de los perros. Es muy importante. Recuerdo que hace unos años, estaba judiciando en el club show de Canadian, 
I can never go to Canada again. Uh, there are no posters on the wall wanted, preferably dead. Uh, I had no excellent, any excellent females. And I remember it was a very, very large class, champion class. And I looked, I looked at the dogs, I passed the dogs, I took the microphone, and I said, this is the future, my next dog is a German chest. Because these were nice dogs in body, but not one of them was a lot higher. Did, not one of them had expression, not one of them had attitude, not one of them had, let's say, the frankness to look at the world, this is mine, and what is not mine will be mine. Not one of them had it. And then it's for me very difficult to say, I like this dog. Dice que jugó en Canadá hace unos años, que no va a volver a jugar nunca más. Y dice que, bueno, le tocó jugar una categoría campeones machos. No, Ah, sí, es el primero, hembra. Perdón, dice que era una categoría grande y que dijo, si este es el futuro de la raza, me voy a poner a criar pastores alemanes. Porque, bueno, no, 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 no. No, one of them had the attitude, ninguna tenía la actitud, no, ninguna tenía esa mirada de voy a conquistar el mundo, el mundo va a ser mío, cueste lo que me cueste, dice que eran todas perras muy buenas. Listen, but also on the other, other way around, I remember two years ago in Croatia, and this year was in uh, Hungary, three weeks ago, I had a dog and they were too much, and that is not breed specific either, and I will punish that too, I will put that backwards too, even if it's a good looking dog, good in the body. ¿Y en qué ámbito lo jugó? ¿En un ring de especializada o...? Sí, sí, siempre especializada, es especializada. When the attitude, the attitude of Rottweiler, he should be calm, very self-confident, he should, but there should be nobility and strength in him, yes? But he should be calm, self-assured. A dog who is jumping around like a kangaroo is not self-assured. He is reacting on things that he should not be reacting on. This is not the self-confidence I'm looking for. Dice que, bueno, que justamente en Croacia también le tocó jugar a un perro que estaba como pasado y que eso también debe ser penalizado porque el temperamento de un Rottweiler debe ser siempre calmo. Que, que, que si está saltando en la pista es porque está siendo... Eh, con personalidad, pero no sé. Tiene que... Perro, está, está siendo incentivado por, por factores externos, no es natural del perro. Pero los perros, los verdaderos Rottweilers, como este, por ejemplo, no están ahí ahora, y tal vez es una buena idea, pero no están ahí ahora. Dice que los Rottweilers, como los que hay en el logo, ya no hay más. Sí, acá sí porque venimos a trazar unos 20, 30 años. Va a tener una grata sorpresa, Mario. Ah, dice que estamos 20 años. Yeah, well, well, let's hope so because these dogs, I remember, they came in the ring, they came in the ring, male and females, and they looked at everything they saw. They said, "This is mine, and what is not mine will be mine." Did they had this strength, this power? The only thing is, these dogs you could not sell to everybody, and now we are selling the dogs to everybody. So these dogs we cannot have them anymore. Dice que tanto machos como hembras antes entraban y decían, este lugar va a ser mío, y si no es mío, va a ser mío. Dice que, que eran así todos, pero el único problema que tenían estos perros era que eran, no se los podía vender a todo el mundo. Mm -hmm. Entonces, hey, the, the problem sí, is, if you all the literature on the Rottweiler, all the books you 